you're in the business insurance zone with me, Steve Savant, national insurance columnist and financial color commentator. And on today's show and all this week, the personal performance series with Dr. Jack Singer. Today's show, overcoming imposter fear. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant. We're broadcasting live to a nationwide audience of financial professionals right here out of Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And with me today, we're going to be on the couch all week with Dr. Jack Singer. Welcome to the show, Jack. Thanks. Have couch, will travel. Oh, I like, I like the mobility. I like the mobility. <laughs> well, normally, people are going to say, wow, Jack Singer's on Steve's show. Usually, I see him on ESPN and all these other sports because you're a sports psychologist. And I've noticed that you started creeping a little bit into our business. You've been speaking at some of the conventions. You're doing kind of work inside the financial services. Yes. Uh, welcome to our world. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, it, it was really an interesting progression. You know, I've been working with athletes who play for professional teams all over the country, you know, Green Bay Packers, mm -hmm. the Miami Dolphins, the Padres, you know, every sport you can imagine. And I started thinking about the kinds of tools that I teach athletes on how to keep their performance consistently optimal. And I realized that there are other professions that could use exactly the same skills. And then someone told me that one group that could use it are financial advisors and planners. Because of the problems in the economy and things yeah. like that, a lot of people have started to lose their edge. Yeah. So I started a series to keep people from doing that and teaching them how to develop and maintain the mindset of a champion. Well, you're really suggesting then the tools that you use in professional athletes, right, with professional athletes are transferable to our industry. Absolutely. Well, for example, when I think about uh, looking at maybe what, what, would, what would be a tool, when I think about this title, especially our title today, it's kind of an ominous title, right, Overcoming Imposter Fear, we all have fear. We have call reluctance. Uh, I don't. I, I, I made, made a mistake with my client. I don't know if I, I don't want to be proactive about calling. There's a lot of different uh, phobias in our daily practice that we deal with. Talk a little bit about what do you mean by imposter fear? Well, you touched on it a bit because some people who have an imposter fear, Steve, really have a telephobia. They're afraid to make a call, uh, especially a cold call, or they're afraid to call a client because they're anticipating they're going to hear something negative, uh -huh. or the client's going to blame them for a loss of value of their portfolio, uh -huh. things of that nature. But when we talk about the imposter fear, you can really look at any profession and you'll find that many people within that profession at one time or another had this fear of thinking that maybe they're not everything they're portraying themselves to be, that they're not as confident as they could be, that they are afraid that they're going to make a mistake, that they think they have to be perfect, that they think they have to have all of the answers, uh, that perhaps the reason they're successful up to now is because of luck. Mm -hmm. So they try to blame it on luck instead of taking credit for it. Mm -hmm. And so it begins to erode at their self-esteem and at their confidence. And that's one of the first things I work on with athletes as well as uh, financial advisors. Now, I, have a, I have a curious question then. Yeah. I have many of our producers have been in the business 20 plus or greater years. So they're all, we have a lot of baby boomers involved. Is our personality in concrete? And how, if I'm already walking in this fear, is it such in concrete that it cannot be busted up? That's a great question, and nothing is in concrete. Uh, even if you've genetically inherited a predisposition to a certain personality or certain behaviors, you can learn how to modify those behaviors. That's the wonder of the subconscious mind, which is a whole other topic, but we can learn to modify behaviors, and that's what I do, is teach people to recognize when they have the issue, and then what can they do to modify that behavior. Well, I think about professional athletes, I think, hey, you're playing in the majors, what more do you need? But they, they really struggle with the same basic you know, phobias, fears, apprehensions as we do. Sure, what, what kind of calls do I get from professional athletes? Uh, I'm not starting. Uh, maybe they don't have confidence in me anymore. Maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Uh, so it gets to that point, or I'm starting, but I made a bad play. How can I do that? I need to be perfect. And this is the kind of imposter scenario that transfers itself to everybody in whatever their profession is. Mm -hmm. when, when you think about dealing with a person like that, and I mean, I cannot understand the stress that could be involved in this or the pressure to be playing at that level, the top level. So I just, we just saw the all-star game. I mean, think about it. You know, we just saw the best of the best. Right. So I don't even understand that kind of level. We have similar producers 
when we get up to sizable clients, where we're talking major money, huge asset base, the fear is huge because they, they're up against some of the top of the table, core of the table guys. Our professions, our creme de la creme elite. It's very tough to do. How can I start to move past my fears? I mean, we all admit we have them. And by the way, where we're now, at least we're there at that part, we're admitting it. We right. have it. Right. You know, it's interesting. It's like somebody who is a professional speaker, which I do. Uh, they say that they're more comfortable speaking to 50 people than 1,000. Why would that be? It's the exact same skill, mm -hmm. right? So why would a producer be more comfortable speaking to one person on a lower level of income rather than a high value client where he's anticipating the competition is going to be stronger? His skills are still the same. Mm -hmm. So what the first thing we talk about to address your question when how do you overcome these issues is you have to understand your self-talk, your internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. That is the crux of the problem. It's the kinds of things we say to ourselves at every moment that causes us to, us to have fears, mm -hmm. not the event that's taking place. Events don't cause the way we feel. It's how we interpret the event, what we say to ourselves mm -hmm. about it. So, I mean, you're talking about we're programming ourselves by our thought life? Absolutely. We've been programmed since we were little kids, and we don't know how to change it unless you meet somebody like me who teaches mm -hmm. you how to do that. That programming has gone on from the time you're a youngster and you develop a life script that keeps replaying itself in your brain unless somebody figures it out for you and helps you interrupt it. Well, I'm wondering if we're, we have many producers that are highly educated, skill sets, I mean, they really have great skill sets. They have actual good client connectivity. They have, they're, they're really kissed into great markets. And yet I see them paralyzed. And it's never by lack of knowledge or education. It's almost always paralyzed by some kind of self-doubt that we're talking about. When we come back after this break, we're going to view more of these areas and issues with Dr. Jack. You're listening to one of the top people in sports, professional sports psychology. And when we come back, we'll talk about more about imposter fear. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Companies in our business are always touting service, products, and underwriting. And we do that too. But here's the difference. Now enter the world of the elite producer with a value package that cuts us out of the pack, a BD that approves social media marketing of non-FINRA products and doesn't take an override. With the best competition desk in the industry, and for our loyal producers, a true group health plan. No one offers that. Brokers Alliance does. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savai. We're with Dr. Jack Singer, and we're on the couch today, have couch will travel. I'm thinking about, uh, I just, we were talking at the break, I was thinking about a gentleman that's an excellent producer, $400,000. I mean, most people would say that's a great income. And he is actually measuring his self-worth by his net worth. And I really don't have the skill sets to help this guy. I think you could help him. Oh, absolutely. A lot of people do. They look at superficial things. Mm. They're, you know, they can be anything from I'm still trying to get the approval of my father, which I never mm. got. Mm. And no matter what I do, it's not good enough. To somebody who decides he needs to be perfect, you know, a lot of advisors are perfectionists. They're type A personality now, perfectionists. Well, a lot of it's genetically predisposed, mm -hmm. uh, but you can learn to modify any behavior. Uh, they may have parents who are type A's and very successful, so they're parroting their behavior because they feel that, that, that that's what I need to do to be mm -hmm. successful. And one of the downfalls of the type A personality is the need to be perfect and kind of being an all or nothing thinker, that mm -hmm. if I'm not perfect, I feel like I fail. Mm -hmm. So they're always measuring themselves against some ideal that's impossible. It's never good enough. Mm -hmm. And I see it in children, young athletes, all, all the time where, you know, if I'm not perfect, if I don't win every match, if I'm a tennis player or a golf mm -hmm. player, then I failed. And they look at everything in all or nothing terms. And so I'm giving their parents books on how to stop your children from mm -hmm. feeling they have to be perfect. Now, you have a, you've written quite a bit yourself. Yeah. I'm thinking if you want to order anything, you say, hey, I would like to talk to Jack. I'd like to read some of his books. And if you write me at thebiz at brokersalliance.com, we'll send you his website. We'll share with you some of his inventory of his books, some of his articles. He's just starting now to do blogging and art in our industry, which we right. welcome to our play, Thank you. our world. 
But if you want that, just call me, say, Steve, I need this 1-800-290-7226. I'm willing to go to the next level and maybe Dr. Jack's your helper. Yeah, absolutely. And some of those things are actually hypnotic uh -huh. recordings uh -huh. that I make. That's a big area that almost nobody else does. But in sports, sports hypnosis is one of the most powerful tools an athlete can learn, but anyone can learn uh -huh. hypnosis to perfect themselves in whatever uh, area they're in. I have hypnotic programs for anger mastery, uh -huh. for example. And I have others to raise your self-esteem. So hypnosis is one of the big areas I work on with people, whether I'm coaching them individually or they're just ordering products. Well, I think when, I, when I'm thinking about this, I say to myself, if professional athletes need this level of tutorial, if they need this level of nurturing, and the best part about what you've said so far is, I'm thinking, well, I'm in my 60s, it's too late for Steve. Maybe not. No, it's never too late. People can change at any time. Mm -hmm. As long as you're capable of learning, you can learn what your habits have been and learn what to do to change them. Mm -hmm. How much of this is really a routine that you have to install, especially this thinking issue, thinking right? Well, it's a routine, but it's taking the place of one that you've already developed. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. A baseball, major league baseball player came to me and said, he made two errors in a game and the manager said, you do that again, I'm sending you down. Now he's panicked. First thing I said to him is, what do you say, he was a shortstop. I say, what do you say to yourself now when you're playing shortstop and a batter comes up to bat? And he said, don't hit it to me. That's what I say to myself. Ah. But what he's doing is he's conditioning his subconscious mind now to freeze if a ball comes toward him, which is enhancing his probability of making an error. So I said, we need yeah. to twist that around. You want, it, you want to say, please hit it to me so I have another opportunity for success. Mm -hmm. Now, see, that, I'm positive that's the way I think. I think other producers, high-end producers, we think like that, and we're doing countermanding thinking exactly. and stopping us from going forward. Exactly, and most producers don't have any clue how much they can really amp up their productivity and their success if they just learned a few of these techniques. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that when I, I always think about marketing, all of our producers, all of our advisors, how do I market my practice? How do I sell my practice? How do I sell myself? And we don't incorporate any of what you're talking about into our overall marketing plan for how we're going to do business with people. That's right. And that's why I saw a niche when I got into this. It was actually a, a big producing group in Australia who heard of me through some of the articles that I wrote and got me involved in this. But that's also why I help producers, advisors, to market themselves. For example, if you don't mind a bit of a commercial, I'd like to explain well, one of those ahead. things. Um, you know, client appreciation events are big things, but what happens most of the time is you spend that time trying to sell more products to your clients mm -hmm. or introduce them to new products or things like that or bring in someone who's going to talk about the market or something of that nature or the economy. What I do is I, they hire me to go to the client events with a program called How to Live Much Longer Than Your Kids Hoped You Would. <laughs> And it's really a program on life extension using psychological techniques. Now, do you think that that's going to interest your clients and every guest they bring along with them? And do you think that those guests are going to say, I'm, I can't believe it. Your advisor actually brought in this nationally renowned psychologist to teach you how to live longer. That's the kind of advisor I need to be working with. Mm -hmm. He's not here trying to sell you something. He cares about you genuinely, mm -hmm. and that's the kind of thing he brings. So that's what evolved into all of my speaking services for producers, for producer organizations, for high producing events, and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Well, when I think about that, that's a huge issue. I mean, I love your your ability to walk into a place and do something completely unique, which, by the way, most client events are not unique. They bring in a gun. He's going to use language that the client can't possibly understand about the market. I mean, right. you know, and they sit back there thinking, I'm in shock and awe and knowledge, but I'm not taking anything away from it. Right. There's no impartation. Right. What it really is is I'm smarter than you. You don't have to understand the words, but buy the product. Just trust me because I'm saying things that are so over your head that mm -hmm. you'll be impressed. Well, I think about it. Well, by the time Dr. Jack's done with you on this subject of lo living longer, you're going to really need to talk to your advisor on the retirement issues because you're going to be living longer than your money's probably going to sleep. That's right. I mean, I think that's probably about it. When I think about this, having Dr. Jack on, we want to really up our game, make our practice what it was always meant to be all along and fulfill the destiny that we have. Well, don't forget, you can watch this show and all our shows this week at www.brokersalliance.com. And as soon as you come to our whole page, get on the on-demand section, and you can push it right there, and you'll be right into our shows. That's the buzz on The Biz for today. We'll see you tomorrow. The Biz is brought to you by Brokers Alliance, a national leader in insurance products, support services, and educational workshops. 
When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. 